when everybody calls in, they want to know the rate. What's the rate? What's the rate? What's the rate? I think that's a good way to compare mortgage companies. And that's an okay way, but you get, there's more to the story than that. So uh, what I wanted to do is, is show you this teeter-totter. You know the teeter-totter from when you were little? This is, there's two factors, and they work inversely. They're inverse relationship. Um, so one is rate, and the other is cost. Right? The interest rate and the closing cost. And that works like a teeter-totter. And when you call most places, they'll quote you a rate that has so many points. But the question that they don't ask, that I like to ask, is how long do you plan on staying in that house? That's an important question. <laughs> the reason is, this teeter-totter, if I push one side of the teeter-totter down, the other side goes up. If I push the other side down, then this side goes up. So I could, for example, say, get the lowest possible rate. Chris, I want the lowest possible rate. Maybe over here, it's uh, 1800 in closing costs. Let's just use, uh, this is 4.125%. I could say, Chris, I'd like to get a lower rate. I could jump this rate all the way down to 3.875, for example. Quarter percent lower. But that might cost me, right? The cost now is going to go up. I'm going to have some points. Maybe I'm going to pay two points to make that happen. The loan is, uh, say, 150000 Right, that cost me an extra $3,000. So now this cost me $4,800. This, frankly, I don't do very often because, you know, life is unpredictable. And you think you're going to be in the house for 10 years, but the reality is this time next year you may have moved, right? You, job transfer, death in the family, got a divorce, got remarried, got a raise and moved up to a bigger house. Anything can happen. So rarely do I have people pay extra to get an even lower rate. It's particularly uh, true in refinancing, but even in purchases, this is true. So the opposite is this, and this works for, let's say you got kids, uh, little Billy's going on to college in three years. So you know as soon as little Billy heads down to IU, you are moving to Florida, right? That's been your lifelong dream and you are moving that year. So if that were the case, what I might suggest is rather than pay down to get the lowest rate, we'll make the rate up a little higher. Maybe the rate is 4.25 in this case, but the cost, see the cost we're gonna push down. So the cost here might be zero dollars to do this loan, zero dollars. Now look, you paid an eighth of a percent more, which will cost you on a $150,000 loan about $9 a month, eight, nine dollars a month. You saved $1,800. Do the math. At $10 a month, that's 180 months it would take you in this new loan to pay for the $1,800 of closing costs. So particularly important, A, if you're moving soon, or B, if you're in a rate-falling environment. I had tons of customers who owed, let's say they owed $200,000. They owed it at 6%. We did this, we could have got them a little lower, but they took a little higher rate, maybe dropped to 5% instead of four and three quarters, but no charge. Now guess what, three months later, the rate still dropped. So if they would have paid 4,800 or even 1,800, it wouldn't make sense again to refinance three months later. But since they paid zero, now the rate goes down to four and a quarter, no cost again, they come back in and refinance again. Now three months more goes by. Let's say the rate drops now to three and three quarters. No cost, they come in and refinance again. They keep going down and down and down. You don't spend your way out of being able to help yourself financially. So just wanted to show you this little diagram. A lot of people don't get this and I hope that you do now. 